before we had games like Dance Central and Judd Dance, back in the 90s, video game players had Dance Dance Revolution. The game theory is the reason why I'm into many rhythm games. It's not the first game in the genre, but it was my first. Welcome to the world of Dance Dance Revolution! This is Konami's famous B Money series! You use a dance pad to step or walk on the arrows at the right timing. You would need to jump on two arrows at once and hold on to long arrows. Easy and normal difficulty feel like an easy walk on the path, but harder levels feel like you're running all over the place. Younger people are familiar with DDR with the game Friday Night Funkin'. At the time, we did not have the Wiimote, Joy-Con, or other motion gaming controllers. Looking back, some people would view DDR as outdated because of the new motion gaming landscape, which I can understand to some level because you're not really dancing. DDR games have different types of game modes and features. Of course, you have the single play mode with 4 panels, double mode with 8 panels, non-stop mode or court mode is playing through a number of songs in a row. Mission mode, first being an ultimate one, had player completing mission like holding on to all three arrows to avoid stepping on down arrows and having your meter be higher than 50% at the end. Let the mode offer players a chance to learn the game. Training mode allowed you to practice routine or part of a routine with different options. You can make your own step routine using edit mode. And the game had some type of battle and party mode which are different for each game. The first time I seen a machine was at a bowling arena when I was young. I heard this wonderful song. I'm not sure what it was. I think it was Hyper Eurobeat. I wanted to play the game, but I didn't like to dance when I was younger. What I did was play the game on a game system I had using a normal controller. From there, I fell in love with the theory because of the music the game theory is known for. If it wasn't for DDR, I wouldn't be into music or music games, or finding one of my favorite genres, Eurobeat. I believe I got into the theory somewhere in the year 2008. I'm not that good when it comes to using the pad. I can only go up to basic difficulty and do them easy difficult and effort levels. But I am very good at using the normal controller. And I got my fair share of triple A and high scored. When I was younger, I didn't like music People that I knew had a taste in music that was off-putting to me. A lot of music I was hearing was rap music or something odd from the internet at the time. I was put off by music altogether. I know that may sound weird to people, but then again, I'm not an ordinary fella. Hearing music like Boom Boom Dollar, Butterfly, and much more is always enjoyable to me. Even covered like cartoon heroes are great. The game had light and artists like Captain Jack, Me and My, and Two Unlimited. To in-house artists like Naoki, who is a composer and arranger for the theory, most known for music like Dynamite Rave. The theory also had music from other Konami games like Beat Mania and Catalvania. Japan, USA, and Europe all have different song lit. In Europe, the game is not even called DDR. The arcade and Japanese version always got new songs first compared to the home USA version. And songs from previous games do show up in newer games as well. If you have the time, please listen to music from the theory. I wish I could name everyone I could recommend. Okay, 
I need to talk about the artist Erotic. For the record, I'm not a horny person and I'm not into that stuff, but the music is good. Anyway, Erotic music is very... Well... And often with artwork that is not for children. With music entitled like... However, there is other music where the female singer from the group used her vocal for a cover of ABBA Dancing Queen and Cat Eye. What I find funny about the lyric is that when people heard We Get You, people were confused and heard the word Pikachu and I can't blame them. One important thing about the theory and for this video are the games that never came to the US and therefore I have never played. But to avoid confusion and to make things easy for me and most people watching, I'm going to focus on the home version, not the arcade version or the different region. I'm not going to look at everything, but I will talk about a few other games. I will talk about what made each game different when it comes to mode, feature, and more. There is not much here in the first game. You have basic mode, nothing to unlock, all the music and basic arrow options. All the music is from the first three games from Japan. Which explains why we have two versions of Brilliant to You. The follow up is much better. Unlockable music with the total download having music from the first five games. A thick panel mode with its own original depth pattern. And edit mode. What's great about the edit mode is that the data carried all the way up to thumb of the PS2 game. But the game is missing beginner difficulty. What made Disney Rave a great game is the use of Disney characters, Eurobeat and Electronic Dance remixes of classic Disney music from popular Eurobeat artists. And Magic is a battle mode. You need more of your color on your bar in order to win by doing better than the other player. Each person has their own skill the better you do, the better your effects are against the other player. Like making the arrow move at a different tempo to adding arrows that are not in the original pattern. PDR Max. A new generation with a new and a bet announcer many people are familiar with. Even if he can be a bit too much. You showed us your ultimate dance. Thank you that much. I can't stop crying. Buckets of tears. <laughs> Mac 1 add thing to the theory and for the better. The game adds free arrow. Long arrow you have to hold on to. The use of these arrows add more to the depth routine and formula. However, music from previous games don't make use of this new idea. The game adds the groove radar and now you can look at the BPM for each song. The radar shows you what to expect in the routine, like how crazy the pattern can get or letting you know about any jumped or freed arrows. This game started with bot levels. The whole point of this is to really test the player in rhythm game form. I'm not the biggest fan of this. I can listen and deal with Math 300, but if you ask me to do the same to 888 or Chaos, the answer is no. However, the best thing to come from Math is the feed option. This is the best addition to the theory and make getting double A and triple A much easier. Everything from the first game is here and better. With a better music lit, music video, 
and inlet mode. Beginner level it back and a new challenge difficulty. Kind of. Only one song had the difficulty. The Red Art Music remitted that only have a challenge level. Extreme had mission mode to unlock and minigame that used the pad in fun ways. The game used the PS2 eye camera for Thaw minigame, allowed you to look at yourself while playing, and a mode that used both your hand and the pad. What I find odd is a code to unlock a thong, and it came from Burger King out of all places. New to Extreme 2 is a better mission mode you don't have to unlock, a shop online combo challenge, and survival. What I like about Extreme 2 are the background. Previous games have random background with most of the music. This time, they are giving much more personality. I could feel that each one was based around music like candy in 1998. The only bad thing about the extreme game is when you break your combo, you automatically get an A ranking no matter how well you did. Supernova, Fizzle, and Dancer are made to be more realistic. Before, they didn't have real hands, and their dancing was random. Battle mode is similar to Magic mode from Disney Rave. This time, you don't need to pick a character. Both players can use all the same attacks on each other. Supernova 2 is more of the same. You can buy items for your robot to help in mission mode. When getting a combo of a certain number, a little graphic will come up. The scoring system is new and different and will use the newer PS2 game, Universe 3, and the 2010 version. Perfect and marvelous rating give you different points. And you don't need to get all perfect to get triple A. Your score just need to be high enough. Welcome to Dance Dance Revolution X. Ten years of dancing wonder. This version marked the ten year anniversary of the theory. The theme of the game is urban. I don't mind it, and it feels right for the theory. The music was reflected as well, and it the weakest out of the PS2. But it does have a music video from the anime Gurren Lagann. One song had the famous Konami code for lyrics, and a song from the game Time Hollow, published by Konami. The rating system is from 1 to 20 and not 1 to 10 anymore. Challenge level is a little different. If the number rating is higher than expert level, you are given the normal challenge level. But if the rating is the same or lower than the expert level, shock arrows will be added to the pattern. The only thing you have to do is avoid them. A new mode, Party Stone, allows players to connect PS2 and play up to 8 players. However, I have never seen the mode in action, and I couldn't find a video anywhere. Story mode is very odd to me. The characters from the theory all have stories and personalities for some reason. Did I miss something here? The mode is easy. Pick someone and play their story. In other words, do easy mission. Uyo being the best. All of his missions are about answering questions. Your answer depends on your dance grade, meaning if the answer is B, you have to get your score to match it, which I refuse to do. Some of the questions are related to the game theory and dancing, but they throw them lazy questions at you. Um, 
Did they really put a one plus one question in the game? The final thing I need to talk about is the announcer. When I talked about the urban theme and music lit, that goes for the new announcer as well. Some of the lines are okay, but most of them are bad. I'm sorry for what you're about to hear. These beats are fresh, yo. Is there an earthquake or something? Cause this party's a crack. No, that beat is banging. Music psychoda. Yo, ho, play those vibes. This ain't b-ball, but that was a nice pick, though. Come on, Holmes, select your music. Psychoda. Hot track coming through. Hot, hot track coming through. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. They're giving it up for you, Holmes. Yo, homie, check out these cuts. Pop locking, beat dropping, this place is rocking. That song is guaranteed to satisfy. Oh man, homie, these beats are the bomb. Dig it, yo. I don't have a copy of Ed 2 because it cost a good amount of money. The game is similar to the first game, but it had a Dice Master mode. I don't remember the mode that much. The only thing I remember is not liking the mode. Dance, dance, revolution, ultra I know about the Ultimate game, but I never played them growing up until now. I don't hear a lot of people talk about Ultimate, Unifird, or other games because I get all the talk go to the PS1, PS2, and arcade. You can unlock all the music in the Ultimate series by putting your controller in the fourth port and entering a code. Ultimate 1 had the best code because it's the famous Konami code. Ultimate 1 felt like DDR Matt, but for the Xbox, the music lit is very familiar and background are right from the game. What make the ultimate theory different are the different modes and visual effects that apply to the dancer. The game offered point and score battles with the winner having the most point or the best accuracy. Challenge mode or mission mode, edit mode and online where you can play against other players and download new music. However, the option had been shut down. From Ultimate 2 and onward is where the game theory started to really show itself to be different. The music lit, background, and mode are completely different from the first. The game offered different types of party mode. The mode still have the same gameplay, but with a party element. Passing a bomb to other players, Attacking the other player in a different battle mode, everyone working together, and quad, a four pad mode with its own original step pattern. Could you imagine someone getting triple A on A on heavy and quad mode? What new with Ultimate Free is only difficulty, freestyle, and quest mode. I like how in Ultimate Free, we have two song titles come with me made by two different artists. Quest mode is poorly done. The basic idea is to fill your bar or fan base, but it takes too long and you have to do it in one sitting. It could take even longer on easier levels. Freestyle mode is dancing freely, but on the pad. It's kind of like looking at freestyle DDR videos on YouTube. I believe that is what they wanted to go for. Ultimate 4 Quest Mode is better and doesn't feel like it would take forever. New to the game are Triple, Speed, Relay, and Power. Triple Mode is a free pad 12 panel mode. Speed mode is a time mode where the arrows stop and you need to step on them as quickly as possible before the music is over. Relay mode is where the step pattern is divided by all the players. And power mode are 
not stop on using different pieces of music lasting around 4 minutes. Universe 1 had and does everything from the Ultimate game with better graphics because of hardware. Quest mode is back and familiar. Unfortunately, you have to play Quest mode in both 1 and 2 to unlock new music. You have the option to buy items like music and movie clips. But these show up at random, unlike in Universe 2, where you have a shop. Buy all the items to help you in quest mode. Universe 2 is more of the same, but lacking only level pattern. What I find odd is that both 1 and 2 were released in the same year in the USA. Universe 3 is the best with graphic and background. Great for watching, but not for the player. Really wish Ultimate and Universe had a filter option. Quest mode is optional, but the best option to unlock new music. You need to complete hard mission and party battle to get money to enter into club. You do all of it to work your way to become the best. Why did Rico look like Naruto? There is one thing I find annoying. From Ultimate 2 all the way to Universe 3, all of the dancers do the same one set of dance moves for the whole song. The reason why is because all the visual effect and background would normally take away from the dancer, so people wouldn't notice. But only having the dancer option on show the issue and problem dance dance revolution i'm calling it game 2010 there are two versions on three different platforms we pa3 and 350 all three have very similar music lid remove the almost rating the good rating doesn't break your combo and none of the games have double or edit mode the PS3 and 350 are the same game. However, the 350 one doesn't have the PS Move mode or you connect. New to the theory is the Groove Trigger. When your bar is full, at any time you can use the trigger and get more points for arrows. I wonder where they got that idea from. Not going to lie, this was fun and a nice idea. This is the first game in the USA to have a used full version of music, but at downloadable content. I don't like how challenge level used it up left and right, down left and right in the step pattern. Club mode is the only way to unlock new music and it feels like a grind. You play random songs until you fail or play the number you pick. You begin on the idiot level and depending on how well you are doing, the game will change in difficulty. You have no arrow option, no option to pick a difficulty and keep it that way, and random addition can be thrown in during gameplay. Now for something different. Dance Master had music from DDR with real dancing. The game combines DDR style gameplay with real choreography. The core gameplay is dancing by matching and holding and hitting markers, trading arrows with your hand, and stepping in circles at the right timing. Both games help you know what the next move is and how to do it, but this game does things differently and not in a good way. The posted and trading arrows are okay but everything else is a problem. The choreography is great and fun. However, some of these moves are really hard. There are five difficulties. The choreography is the same for all difficulties. The only difference is what the game wants you to do. You are only given points for what the game had you to do. 
it is a problem on light and standard level. It feels pointless to do everything. They're not giving points for everything. I know Judd Dad had the issue that anything with the left hand only doesn't give you points, but did it even work? Especially in some of the routine. Playing the game on hard level is when things get to be overkill. It is when the game wants you to do everything. Doing real dancing is not a problem. I never claim to be amazing. And I don't have a problem with learning. But this DDR style gameplay is a pain. The game made the idiot move and made them harder for no reason. A simple pull on light level, it turned into a trading arrow and then the pull on master level. To make things even worse, the game requires you to be fast and very accurate, which is not a problem in some cases. But some of the trading arrows are so small or come up so fast, I had no time to even react. And I have a hard time keeping up with everything because of all the flashes, arrows, and circles that cover up the hand, and all the breaking covering up everything on the TV and the performer. Health mode removed the arrow, circles, and so on, but it doesn't remove the breaking or the down. And the game still wants you to do things accurately in this style of gameplay and remember the choreography. But the biggest problem is the connect. Oh yeah, I forgot to talk about the parallel universe mechanic. When your dead bar is full, you can hold your right hand out and then move the hand up. You enter into the universe and get more points. I went into this four times and I wasn't even trying to. And no, it's not automatic or doesn't have an auto option. So this made me think this type of gameplay is not for the Kinect and was this game made for the Kinect? The arcade version might be better, but not at home. And no, it's not my Kinect or how most games use the Kinect. I played Dance Central on the same day and I had no problem. The game was made for the Kinect in mind, does a great job in detecting movement, and choreography actually differed depending on difficulty level with a practice mode. This game, however, is a maybe for some people. The first DDR I played. The plot had Mario or Luigi getting back for or taken by Waluigi. Everything in the game is fit by one option. Need to get out of a pipe? Need to get Koopa out of a garden? Need to get an orb back? All you have to do is dance. Could you imagine if whatever K-pop band dance move solved world hunger? I know this game was to appeal to everyone that played Mario game, but this is so dumb and I love it. I love all the music here. The lid had music remitted from Mario games like Paper Mario and Mario Kart, music from other Nintendo IPs, and music from the public domain. The game add gimmick to the gameplay and had many games as well. You will be stepping on Goomba, double stepping on Koopa, a horny bomb, running from a chain jump, and more. Two issues with the game are the lack of arrow option and the low difficulty. Not having arrow option is not that bad because of the low difficulty. So, in a way, it worked itself out. It's time for the hottest party. The hottest party theory goes for a more cartoony look with the visuals and more. The game made use the left and right hand marker that used motion control. 
and the gimmick for the mode part are similar to DDR Mario. Lighted Music like Far Away by Nickelback and Blue Monday by New Order are all covered. Red of the Music is new music and remitted of Clatted Like Candy in 1998. Two problems with the game is the lack of arrow option, mostly the speed one. Party Party does have the hard depth pattern, and the game resets the hand marker and gimmick when you turn off the game, and you have to turn them off all the time. Party Party 2 is a much better game and correct things from the first game. The game had arrow and speed option, and a few of the songs used the real artist. Party Party 2 had a new battle mode, and you can use your me. Why? Then in the fin mode, you did arrow block and hand block. You can attack each other by using D to stop a player from hitting marker or stepping on arrows. A player had to break them off by shaking the Wii mode or stomping on the pad. Party Party 3 offered a lot of different game modes. Party Party 3 and Ed 2 have similar music lit. Party Party 3 had more lighted music and gimmicky mode. Ed 2 had more mode related to the PS2 game, challenge difficulty, and a dice master mode. I can't say how the Wii Balance Board mode really is. Because I don't have one and I see no reason to get one. From what I found, you'll be hip rolling, hip bopping the arrow, and punching with the Wii mode and nunchuck. Hyper move mode is terrible. The mode had the player using the pad and hitting hand marker in all four directions. Left and right hand marker are okay. But up and down is when the game could not detect the hand motion. One thing that annoys me about the Haunted Party game is the scoring for some of the difficulties. In order for you to get a real triple A in some cases, you have to use either the hand marker, the gimmick, or both in Haunted Party 1 and 2. In Haunted Party 3, you only have to worry about the gimmick. You see the gold crown? That is telling you that I got all perfect. But because I did not use the gimmick, they gave me a double A. It's one thing to get one grade and the red perfect. But to tell me that I have to play by their rule, it lame. The final thing I need to talk about is the Latin music. One for each Haunted Party game and two for the Wii 2010. These are for people to learn how to play. And yet, the lyrics reflect that. Step on the right and down panels. Now you are facing diagonally to the left. Right, up, down. Did you step on the last arrow with your body facing sideways? This is the Wii version of 2010 with Wii graphics and you don't have to worry about the gimmick causing you not to get a triple A. This version does not have the groove trigger, downloadable content, challenge level, the newer scoring system, and club mode. The game once again had a balance board mode. You will mostly be doing the same thing as before. But the game had you stepping on and off the board for the pattern. Choreography mode tried to be like other games like Just Dance. It made use of the motion control and the pad. Beginner level had only the easy hand motion. Basic level is the same but at the arrow. Difficult had the player do everything. And effort level had the player do everything, but in stealth mode. Why? It wouldn't be a problem if this were other game, 
but the pad and not seeing the arrow is the problem. The last game in the series to be on a console. We too. No gimmick in terms of gameplay and mode. You have single play and for the first time on Wii, double play and challenge level. Some of the music allows you to pick a short or long version, but not in double play. The game uses a combination of both the old and new gory system. Really? Perfect and marvelous rating give you different points, but you need all perfect to get triple A. After Wii 2, DDR stopped being on home console. All the newer games were arcade only. The theory is still going on even with the game DDR A3, and it came out this year. However, all the arcade games have small updates and new music, but that's it. Okay, one more game. Everyone, meet Death Mania. The game is DDR, but copy the gameplay. I even got it running on my Pi 4. Every song from all the game can be added to this one game. I can now play all of my favorite or discover music from DDR game I have never played. And discover some questionable content and stuff. Not only that, but you can add music not from DDR. I have added music from DDR clone like In The Groove, different rhythm game from my favorite artist, music people made for games they love like Animal Crossing, and from games themselves, your music options are unlimited. If you can't find something, you can make your own file and pattern. The game has normal mode, battle, court, training, and edit mode. You have single and double play, a free panel mode I didn't even know about, and a thick panel mode. However, if you want mode like Bomb and Quad from Ultimate and Universe, or use the gimmick and hand marker from Wii, you have to use the original hardware. A good computer, music, maybe a controller, and the default theme is all you need. But there are many different themes and mods out there, each with their own options. One mod I recommend is the Auto Step Generator, and it does what the name implies. Not sure if it's already in the game by default. It is needed because the game had many options from the normal DDR to other games like Pump It Up and Beat Mania. Step Mania feels like an all-you-can-eat buffet with the endless amount of music, a fan arrow option, mod, different game mode, and type. There is more the game can do than what I talked about and showed in this video, and the community is very active. My only issue for the game are small nitpicks here and there. But it doesn't affect the gameplay, or I can find a workaround. Step Mania, in my opinion, is the best and easiest way to play DDR. That was a fun time going down memory lane. I would love it if the music from the theory was used in a dancing game that not dead evolution. More close to something easier, the game theory is still fun to me. Outdated in the dancing area, but fun in the music and rhythm area. If you have the money, you can find one of these games for cheap. I hope you had fun watching. My only advice is don't play Healing Vision, the angelic version, in a hospital or near people who have a fear of dying. Why you may add? Well... Yeah.
Maybe don't do that.